Let's have Cal Gang. All right, so we got this statics problem here. So let's go ahead and solve it, right? So we have this, basically this tension that's being pulled over and then there's a P pulling down. And we have this bar that's on the rod that's holding up that tension. So that's basically what's happening, right? So we have a couple of distances. We got some forces. Uh, make sure you know that my P is equal to six. So let's go ahead and solve. So what are we solving for exactly? Well, we're looking for the, the shear force at C, the moment around C, and the normal force at C. So if we want to do that, we're going to need to basically break it up. So if we make a break here, then we're going to have the, uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're not going to use this for a little bit, but we're going to need it later, of course. So let's just draw our future di diagram. So here's A, and then here's C. So we took the cut, we cut everything to the left, so that means that we're going to need to consider that our moment is going to be going clockwise, so this is moment of C. We're going to have the shear of C, or so we're going to need C, and then our normal at C. So those are the forces we're looking for. And then we also need to consider that A has a force A of Y and A of X. So right now, we don't know any of this stuff, so of course we can't solve an equation if we don't know any of the equations, or any of the numbers. So basically what our goal now is we need to find A of X and A of Y, and those are gonna allow us to find this stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's make a force body diagram of our whole system. What is happening in our whole system? So we have A here, and this is C, and this is our intersection, and then this is there. So this goes up. So uh, we can label, this is like our force here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a cut kind of here. I'm just gonna imagine that this is tension. I'm gonna label that force tension. And then we have P here. I'm actually gonna make this, I'm gonna make this red because I want all my forces to be red. So there's an internal force here, right? This pushes back and forth, but they're gonna counteract each other. So basically what we're looking for is our whole system. And then of course, like we said, we have A and Y. Nice. So we know P. P is the only thing we know here. Um, so we want to find tension, A of X, and A of Y. So if we want to find tension, tension is going to allow us to find A of X. So let's take the moment around A. If we take the moment around A, that will allow us to find tension. And if we know tension, we can find A of X, and we can find A of Y, and then we can solve that. That's the order of operations here. That's what we're trying to figure out. So we're taking moment at A, that's where it said, so moment, or some of the moments at A. We know it's going to be equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. So let's consider, right? What do we have? So we have P pushes down. So P is going to push this way, which is going to make us want to go counterclockwise. So that's going to be a positive. So it's going to P times 2.25. Now 2.25 comes from 0 0.75 plus 0 0.75 plus 0 0.75. That's our distance. So then tension, tension's pulling this way. That's going to make us want to go clockwise, so we're going to subtract t, so minus t, and then what's the distance for t, right? So t is pushing in the x direction, so we're looking for vertical distance. And if we look back at our diagram here, at a picture, we know that the rod goes up 0.5 meters, and then the radius of the circle is another 0.1 meter. So that means that its vertical distance is that 0 0.5 plus 0.1. So it's going to be 0 0.5 plus 0.1. And that's all we have here. So then if you plug in your P and move T over, so T is equal to 1 over 0 0.6. We're dividing by that 0 0.6. P, 6 kilonewtons times 2.25. Label that like that. And I'm going to write it up here. So tension is then is 22.5 kilonewtons. That's a big tension. So that's good. So now we have tension. That's going to be very useful. So let's go ahead and find A of X and A of Y. So some of the forces in the X direction, we know it's going to be equal to zero. So tension pulls right, so it's going to be tension minus A of X. So that's going to tell us that A of X is equal to tension. It's also equal to 2.25, or 22.5. And then A of X is going to be pushing to the left. And now if we do some of the forces in the y direction, I'll give you a hint. It's 
going to be two forces. That's going to be negative P plus A of Y. That tells us that A of Y is equal to P. So like that, A of Y is equal to six kilonewtons. And P pushes down, so that's going to want to push upward. Okay, so finally we can go back to what we made over here. Hopefully you didn't forget. So we took the cut at C. We said we're going to cut it at C and everything to the right is what we're looking at. Our shear force points up, our normal force points out, and our moment around C is going to point clockwise because we cut off everything to the left. We cut off to the left, that moment's going to go like that. So what should we find first? Well, let's find normal force, right? That's what's first on the... So some of the forces in the X, we know it's going to be equal to zero. So then it's going to be minus A of X, minus NC. Cool. So then, of course, you move NC over, and it's going to be minus A of X, which is 22.5. So then you find NC. So there we go. NC. Normal NC is 20, negative 22.5. Basically, that's just saying it's pushing to the left. Or it's pushing to the right. Um, is it? Let's see. Let's find out what I put. Yep. Gotcha. So it's just, yeah, that's the answer. Then let's do it. Some of the forces in the y direction. Uh, so what do we got? We got VC. So this is our shear force pushing up. A of Y. We said it's pushing up. And that's it. And well, that's equal to zero. So then we can say VC is equal to negative A of Y. So then VC is equal to negative 6. we've got to take the sum of the moments at the C. So if we take the sum of the moments at C, we're going to have the moment of C, of course, and that's pushing counterclockwise. So it's a negative MC. And then, uh, let's think, so if we're taking it here, we're going to have to consider A of Y. So A of Y is the only one that's going to cause a moment around C. So A of Y is going to push counterclockwise. We're going to add A of Y times its distance, which is 0.75. So we'll move MC over, MC is equal to A of Y, which is 6 times 0 0.75, and then you're going to get that moment of C is equal to 4.50 kilonewtons per meter. And there you go. So that's all three parts of this question answered, just like that. That's all you have to do. So this kind of question, it's not too tricky, but it actually is really tricky because there's a lot of parts you got to get through. You gotta figure out kind of intuitively what your next step is gonna be. So it's a good idea to make an action plan at the beginning. Say, I wanna do this so I can find this, so I can find this, so I can find my answer. So if you're struggling with any of this, I have a lot of videos, I have a whole series on this. So feel free to check me out on my YouTube channel, of course, that you're watching right now, hopefully. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.